Connor Maynard, aka the songbird of our generation, is one of the world's biggest online recording artists, with hundreds of millions of people listening to his voice every single month across social media and streaming platforms. This stuff is bigger than me, and like it's like very, very important to make sure it's yeah. sorted out before we move forward. So he yeah. was all over the news. He went into the biggest TV show in the UK, one of, one of the biggest, arguably one of the biggest TV shows in the UK. Obviously, he had done things that were wrong. Yeah. That's no proof of everything. Like, okay, how about I set up a call with you and me? He's like, I know where you are right now and I know it's hard to know what to do next and you know, I'm here if you ever want some help. Like, I'd love to help you out. Did he give you his number? He gave me his number. Yeah. Whether or not it's you know his, his main number, I'm sure he probably has more than one. <laughs> I think that the recent things that have happened with Logan were, yeah, awful judgment. Awful, awful judgment. And this is another thing where yeah, I've I've met him before. Because it was my first, I guess I didn't really know what I was doing, and I think that I would handle future relationships so differently. Mr. Maynard! <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> I feel like there are certain things in life where you, like, some people just can't be your friends. Like, your doctor can't be your friend. You know what I mean? Like, you can't go to a doctor and be like, I have a rash, and then they're your friend. Like, that's just weird. I feel like this is one of those things. Yeah, and I know too much about <laughs> you. Yeah. You know what I'm lying? You're like... <laughs> <laughs> You'll be looking at the camera like... As we start this interview, look what my managers have sent me. Oh my god. <laughs> so I don't know if you've been seeing this floating around the internet. It says, I thought I'd had a tough year till I saw Conor Maynard's hair. Casper and Jack kind of came together and decided to edit my head. <laughs> Jack edited it so subtly that it looked real. <laughs> like even if you zoom in it looked real. It made my hairline look like it starts at like, the back of my head. And it looks so real. It's because of the reflection. And there was also a light, like there was like a there's a shadow or like a light that was on my head that made it even worse. So some random person <laughs> quote tweeted it. He had oh, ten thousand yeah. followers, but his tweet got twenty thousand retweets, sixty thousand likes. I've had so many people from like England like texting me like, oh my god, like what happened? It was so bad that yesterday Connor just didn't want to do the interview. <laughs> And no, 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 he didn't say that. He said, he says, I need to start, I need to start thinking a little bit more about me <laughs> and my image. Because you guys are going to end up ruining it. Sooner or later, we're going to post something on Connor that he'll never be able to come back from. Yeah. But speaking about that, do you actually have a career? Do I actually have a career? Yeah. I think. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just trying to be one of those real dickhead interviewers. Yeah. I still predominantly do music. Music is still my main thing, but it's all online. It's all based around creating viral content. It seems like you do fairly well, so how are you actually making money? I think it's kind of no secret anymore that there is a lot of money to be made online. What you do, what I do, if, if, if it's online and it's, and it's, and it's generating views, and then it's, it can make money. I'm in a bit of a situation at the moment where years ago when I was 17, or and then I re-signed it when I was 18, I signed a, a traditional recording contract. And the revenue that was made all you know came from record sales and you know all of that kind of stuff for me in the last pretty much in the last two years everything switched like everything went from me making the majority of my income through record sales or live shows or whatever to being completely made through my online platforms whether it be you know youtube or spotify how much money do you make per million views on spotify just as an artist, not you, but if you could give me that answer. I think the average is like, every million streams is like $5,000. How many streams do you get a month? I actually don't know. I've not really properly looked into it, but that's mainly because at the moment I'm still trying but to... But basically uh, what I'm figuring out is, you can be an artist in this day and age and you don't need a label. You can do it all on your own. You know, a lot of the grime artists especially are doing it completely independent. Like, they don't have a label, they just do it themselves, they build the hype themselves, they market themselves. It kind of depends also what genre yeah. of music you're in as well. If you kind of want to be like that in that mainstream pop, a label is still extremely powerful, but it can also be very difficult. It seems like your label did a really good job when you first started. I mean, you had a number one album in the UK, yeah. and you were from Brighton. <laughs> no offense to Brighton. <laughs> But like you were Hove, actually. Hove. Hove, actually. But you started on YouTube, right? Well, the, the reason it all kind of started, and you've kind of... Yeah, you've heard the story, but anyway. <laughs> By the way, this is going to take 30 minutes, so I'm going to get a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Before all of the label, whatever, how did you realise you could sing? Because I try and sing all the time. Well, I've been trying to sing my whole life yeah. and make it as a singer. But my, unfortunately, I can't sing. Every time I open my voice, I go... <gasps> it sounds good in my head. Yeah, never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't mean you're good or not. Like, how do you know you're a good singer for one? And it could just be your family telling you you're good. Funny enough, that was a weird kind of issue at the beginning. I think that my mum was always very like skeptical over the whole thing because she felt like, well, you know, you watch X Factor and you see these people go on it, and their parents are like, they are the next best thing. Yeah. They are going to be the biggest artist in the world. And then they open their mouth and they sound like Casper. <laughs> and <they're> like. <laughs> and like 
But their parents are in such, like they're so delusional that they seriously believe that their child is incredible. Yeah. And my mum was always a bit worried, like, well, what if we think you're good because you're our son? But actually, you're not. One day that kind of all changed because there was this girl that I would always get the bus home with. Like, she would always sit How did I know me. a girl would get involved? <laughs> Probably had a little bit of a soft spot for her. And this was, when, as I said, year 10, so it's when all your classes, I don't know if it's the same over in South Africa, but in the UK. Yeah, we, we just kind of sit in a grass <laughs> field. We don't really go to school. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was this other guy who was in, in my class, and we, we both knew we liked music, so we'd, we'd often sing together in classes. And this one day... But he... you'd sing in class? Yeah, yeah I guess when pretty, it's like... That's pretty weird. <laughs> well, I mean, not, not just like, not like when everyone was silent, like everyone would be like chatting. Oh, okay, yeah. Not, not just stand up like, oh. <laughs> and just face the class. I mean, that's something you would do right now. No, no, you yeah, do it. Sing, on, you'd mean, sing when like everyone was chatting and okay. not really getting any work done. He was coming back to my house and he never normally gets on my, my bus home because we lived yeah. on the opposite sides of Brighton. And we started singing. And yeah. this girl, that, as I said, that would always get the bus with me, overheard. And she kind of turned around and she was like, do that again. She freaked out. She was like, oh my god, Connie, you're amazing! Like she properly freaked out. And obviously I'd never experienced that reaction to me singing Neither ever I. in my life. <laughs> Neither, you know. yeah. She told like almost everyone in my year. Like she told all, especially all the girls in, in, in my oh. year. That I could sing. I bet I remember, things changed for you there. And I remember throughout the day, like, you know, people come up to me and were like, right, we heard you can sing. Like sing then. Do it. Do it. Like literally go. And then you start uploading yeah. YouTube videos? I kind of thought, well, what if I put it on YouTube? Because then it would be people who I don't know. Because I was like, all these people you are my friends. You still have that worry. You always had yeah. that worry about it just being your family who like it, then just being your friend. Now it's, does the internet like it? Well, yeah, exactly. Because I'm such a good friend, I remember the story goes that you filmed a video with and, yep. and that video got discovered by Neo's people somehow. I, I received a message from a guy who said his name was Deshaun. And he was like, hey man, I work close with Neo. And obviously at the that, I was like a huge Neo fan. Yeah, I, was like, was. I was like, oh my God, I think at that point he just released Closer and mm -hmm. Miss Independent and he was killing it. So I said to him, I was like, you know, look, this is amazing. And you know, this is, I'm so happy that you, you know, you're, you're saying these things to me, but how am I meant to know that you're telling the truth? And he was like, oh man, it's cool, no, look, look at, look at Neo's album, you can see my name there. And I was like, well, you could just say that's your name, that's no proof whatsoever. He's like, okay, how about I set up a call with you and Neo? I was still playing with, <laughs> with my <Mom>. penis. <laughs> <laughs> I was still discovering my testicles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was still smacking my testicles against the water <laughs> in the bath and seeing if it hurt. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, I didn't get to do that, so I do that now. <laughs> <laughs> His name comes up on the screen, it says something like Santos, and I'm like, mm -hmm. like what is this? Like, I'm, I'm, there's no Santos has been mentioned so far, yeah. like, what, where's this name come from? So I'm instantly thinking this is real. And then, yeah, like, I answer it, and, and I see Neo sitting on the other side of uh, the screen, and he just, yeah, I, I remember he says, hello, sir, and I kind of, I'm like, oh. What do I yeah. say? Like I'm trying not to freak out. We just started talking and he told me that he was interested in signing me and obviously all these amazing things and it was crazy. Like it was crazy. I had a year and a half where nothing happened. I got signed and literally nothing happened. And the thing is that whole, that was a really like difficult yeah. year and a half because I had my family, my friends being like, what's going on? Like we thought you were going to be on radio. You know what? I guess it's over, you failed. But that's the thing. There's so much behind the scenes stuff that goes on behind our favorite artists, musicians, even YouTubers. That, that you don't know how much effort and work and time they have to spend on projects before they can come out. Yeah. And you just think, oh my god, they got lucky with that, or oh my god, they did that. And also, and that's just, they have put in the groundwork, and you obviously did during that year and a half. And also, a lot of the time is, you're kind of just waiting for something yeah. to happen. The head of my label and my a took me to the side, and they were like, we've got some exciting news. And I was like, what? And they were like, we got a call from Pharrell today. And I was like, right? And they were like, he's really interested. They, they figured it all out and I, w I went out to Miami for a week to work with Pharrell and obviously, th and that was at the exact moment, like the exact week, my first single, which I can't say no, went to radio for the first time. It was crazy and that literally kickstarted everything. First image. The first statement that comes to mind is you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> it's my brother. My Your brother? brother. Yeah. He was all over the news. He went into the biggest TV show in the UK, one, one of the biggest, arguably one of the biggest TV shows in the UK. And I think that obviously he had done things that were wrong in the past and um, whether or not he deserved the punishment he got for those things is definitely up for debate. 
you, you, there's argument from both sides. He definitely offended a lot of people, and you know you can't get away with that. But you know he, he does have the the thing that he was young, and a lot of people back then didn't you know you didn't th you wouldn't think about that. You'd, and I think a lot of people learnt more now that if you post something online, it's there forever. You shouldn't say shit. Try not to be an asshole ever, obviously. Yeah. But when you're young, you you do, I mean, have a tendency to push things and not know what's appropriate sometimes. Another aspect of it is that he was, I think you'll agree, he was definitely targeted as yeah. well. He was... Well, the media hate YouTube. <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest. Um, and yeah, we make mistakes and the media pounces on it. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of the time, the media, you know, is talking about things that do actually happen. Yeah. But they might make it sound even worse than it actually was. Yeah. But that's just, in general, I feel like that's something that anyone who's in a position of power has to deal with. Yeah. And YouTube is in a position of power right now and yeah. they're terrified by it. Um, but yeah, I think whichever YouTuber went on to that show was gonna get it. Was gonna get it hard. Mm. The person I found very interesting, he dealt with it really well, was Mikey Pierce. He has his moments where he's calm, he's collected, he has a very level head, and he can. And he, you know, I definitely think in the whole Jack thing, he was very. He was a very good person to have around. Yeah. He, rem he reminded us that Jack is our friend and a person. And because we, we were just thinking, oh my god, the online things. And he's like, no, no remember that Jack's a real human being. And we yeah. need to be there for him because we're his friends. Yeah. Justin Bieber. Yeah. I met him for the first I time. I knew you wanted to tell the story. I met him. <laughs> he's, a, he's a fan. No, it was, very, it was a very weird, surreal moment meeting him. Well, it was at a club in LA and, and a guy who I know really well, who knows Justin, was like, oh, would you like to meet him? And I was like, oh, I didn't really want to meet him in a club, but I thought, whatever, yeah. like, let's do it. And he took me over and then, yeah, Justin kind of stood up and he was like, bro, can I just say your voice? Is amazing, and I was just like, "What?" <laughs> I just, I remember, like, I remember, Ant was standing behind me. And he, he was like, <laughs> "Man, what, <laughs> I what the hell is that? We're we dreaming again, buddy." <laughs> but yeah, he couldn't believe it. And then, like, yeah, we having those dreams where we dream the same dream at the same time. <laughs> it was so strange. And he's, I know where you are right now, and I know it's hard to know what to do next. And you know, I'm here if you ever want some help. Like, I'd love to help you out. Did he give you his number? He gave me his number. Yeah. Whether or not it's you know his his main number, I'm sure he probably has more than one. <laughs> he probably has the one that he palms off to. <laughs> To the bottom feeders. <laughs> <laughs> but have you texted him? Uh, no. No. <laughs> anyway, and then, uh, and then halfway through the night, halfway through the night, he was like, oh, bro, is, is it cool if we just do like one shot? And I was like, yeah, let's do a shot. And then he made like everyone around the table do a shot. Oh. And he was like, this is for kind of main and oh. success. And yeah, it was really, really That's nice. another guy. like thing I feel like he went through so much. That scared me. Like, honestly, that scared me. Yeah. That whole situation scared me because. Of all the people I've ever met in the public eye, he was honestly one of the most welcoming, one of the ni like one of the nicest. And of all of those same people that I've met in the public eye, he has by far the worst reputation around him. Yeah, yeah, and it's I'm sure he does have his moments. Like we all do. We all have moments where we're probably in a bad mood, yeah. and someone comes at us at the wrong time, and and we maybe yeah. we handle the situation badly. And like, and I get that, but it was kind of worrying because it's like, wow, like when you get to that status. People are gonna try and tear you down. It's almost like it's it's sad, but it's what, like it's almost like yeah. it's human nature. And I don't know why, but why do you think I'm trying to keep my YouTube views so low? <laughs> yeah. Um, I knew you would tell me that. Yeah. I think that the recent things that have happened with Logan were, yeah, awful judgment, awful, awful judgment. And this is another thing where yeah, I've I've met him before. You know, it was it was one day, and it, you know, I was there for a couple of hours, or maybe even an hour or something. And the entire he's he's a genuinely really nice guy. Like. I'd, I texted him because I wanted help getting in touch with someone to do a potential collaboration and he literally set it up in yeah. minutes. Yeah, he was a really, really nice guy when I met him and I honestly have a bad word to say about him from, from that experience. I personally don't think he's deep down a terrible person, right. but I think it was a fucked up situation. There's a family who's going to be grieving that very day. So I want to talk a little bit about your relationship with Victoria. Um, that has been a massive part of your life. I could almost say it changed your career forever. <laughs> That'd be fair. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. Why are you laughing? <laughs> no, it's just funny because it's, it's you. You know. It's, yeah. Is it uncomfortable? I wouldn't feel uncomfortable if I was talking to like someone I'd never talked before. Yeah. It's just weird, like, here we go again. Like, yeah. I know what you boys will think when I talk to someone. Oh, no, oh, but oh. I don't want to go too in depth because I know you could talk for three hours. Yeah, it was, it was definitely my first ever you know, serious relationship. I never felt anything like that. And I think that because it was my first, I guess I didn't really know what I was doing. And I think that I would handle future relationships so differently. Yeah. I think I was naive in the fact that I just thought that, oh, I've had number one album. Yeah, I can just, you know, I can 
she can become everything and I can, you know, and when I'm ready to come back, boom, I'll be back. A second album, number one again. And I was naive to believe that. You have to keep interacting with your fans, you have to keep that connection there at all times. Because if you don't, they move on to someone else. That's just the way the world works. I let myself get too sucked into it and like obsessed, but like not in a creepy way, I'm obsessed in like everything I did, I would think, what's she, what's she gonna think? What, how's she gonna feel about that? Yeah. Whether it's lyrics I'm writing or a video that I'm planning to, like a music video that I'm planning to do, I'd always think, you know, how would she feel, what would she think? And the thing is, I didn't blame her. I didn't blame her at yeah. all. It wasn't her fault. Yeah. It was like, and I, to this day, I don't blame her. It was me. It was, the, it was, I let myself like get so sucked into yeah. that relationship and that world that I completely neglected everything else. Because I started realizing that- You didn't even that, hang out with me anymore. And yeah, like even when, like, and I've told you before, like, when I didn't get invited to your birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big thing for me. I was like, wow, like we were fine. I didn't invite like you because of that, but no, no, I no, probably no. thought you wouldn't come. Then. No, that's what I mean. Yeah. And I don't blame you for not thinking yeah. I wouldn't come because I didn't go out, I didn't do like, I, 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 I still love the way you just said, I don't blame you for thinking I wouldn't come. That was such a sexual moment. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because I started realizing that towards the end of the relationship, it, it made it worse because then she could feel that I was yeah. being very distant. And then it's. And then she could feel that I was doubting it. She could feel that I didn't want to be there. Not, you know, I, I wanted to be there because I cared about her so much. But I, I really was worried about what was going to happen in terms of, and I, you know, and I really started talking about and royalty, and they didn't do very well. They did not, you know, get where I wanted them to be. And I just felt like it was because I couldn't divide my time properly. Mm -hmm. I couldn't divide my time between her and doing that. As we said, the first year and a half you did before your album, that amount of hard work every day going to London, yeah. getting in all the effort, getting the strategy, mm -hmm. all that. But I feel like you've managed to get that back now. And I know you're in a place, because I knew like at the height of your kind of career when it comes to being an artist on a label and mm -hmm. being on radio. But never have I seen, like being in South Africa obviously and traveling with you a bit recently, the amount of people who have been touched by your, your videos on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, is actually unreal. When I released my first album, I think I had 500,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Yeah. And obviously now I've got almost 7 million. You get like so many subscribers and you get, your videos getting over 100 million views sometimes. On and, it's, and it's amazing, but it's weird because it's like, it's so bittersweet because yeah. people don't understand that. It is annoying and frustrating when people come up to you and say, oh man, like, you know, like, you were killing it and now what happened? It's like, well, I'm doing my thing just in a different way, like I'm doing my stuff online and, and it's reaching, believe me, far more people than it ever did yeah. when... And that, the proof is in the numbers and in... Well, no, it's, it's going down to the bloody beach. <laughs> How do they know Connor here? And you've actually taken this new kind of digital world by storm yeah well i think that i think that's why you know for me i would definitely would love to help people in the future i would love to bring new artists up through you know and teach them how they can promote themselves uh, online and, and you know really build a fan base online um i think i still have much to learn when it comes to you know original content and 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 promoting your own uh, music when it comes to as i said like a radio and chart but you can't do that without a label and it sounds to me I'm not putting words in your mouth, it sounds like they have you I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in a very difficult situation with my label right now. I want it to be sorted out as soon as I can because I want to release original music, I want to do all that, and I want to put out a new album. I've been promising a second album since 2014, so mm. I, I definitely want to, you know, do that, but I'm, I am in a bit of a situation right yeah. now. And I hope, obviously, anyone's watching who is waiting for, waiting for that album, waiting for that music, can understand that it's not me and it's not my fault. Yeah. Um, but this stuff is bigger than me and like it's like very very important to make sure it's yeah. sorted out before we move forward so it's tough when uh, such a creative person has to also figure out the business side because you just probably you well, yeah you I just want to like music I don't want to I don't want to sit in like you know business meetings I just want to you know I, I want to have a team that could do that for me and then I just create yeah. music and content or whatever um but but right now you're fighting with that team yeah exactly yeah Fuck. You're a you're a true dime, and this is so weird. I have to be. <laughs> this is the only time I'm ever gonna be nice to you because we're on camera. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep being that asshole. Keep editing so. my forehead. And <laughs> <laughs> you but thank you so much for coming on Life After YouTube. We should change the name, guys. I actually want you guys to comment what you want to do with the name. Should we do a thumbnail, Connor? <laughs> we'll make it look like a single. Okay. The interview of. How do I do it? Here you go. Ready? Really like? Yeah. Sing your favorite note right now, go.
Nejde.